Hello and welcome. I'm Sunny Scunny, a City Skylines player based in the UK. I like to focus on relaxed, creative building that balances the aesthetics while exploring the game's mechanics. Today, we're in Middlesford, a sizable but modest city nestled within the scenic Windy Fords map predominantly using the European theme. It hosts a blend of grid-based and organic development while adapting to the diverse topography. Okay, so I'm just going to start the session today with a quick health check of the city since we've allowed it to run for a around about a year, I think, since the patch update. And things have looked to have settled down a little bit. Probably almost instantly this area was full of high rent notifications and the same again with our other low residential neighborhood here. But fortunately, it looks to have calmed down now. And we've only got a couple, well, three here. And it's usually because of, yeah, we've got a retired person with a student. So we haven't got any working people in the family. And it's probably a similar story to these as well. Again, another retired person with a student. So depending on where the student is in the education funnel, the elementary school. Uh, sometimes if they're in college or in high school, they will graduate and go into work and then usually the household sticks around. Uh, otherwise, I imagine these people may have to move away or maybe a new person will move in with them and bring in some rent money. Now, it's a different story when we look at our other town, which is just on the other side of the map. We have quite a lot more of these icons popping up. However, this area has always been blighted with uh, high rent issues. And I think one of the main reasons for that is just lack of connectivity with the, with the main city. And I think that's probably one of the issues with working with more than one city on a map is people uh, struggle to find work or education in these small areas and therefore they have to commute into the main city and that can either be costly in terms of monetary value or in time and it negatively impacts their wealth overall but you know i i imagine we have very similar issues here with uh, retired people and students so we just have a quick look so we have a, a retired adult a retired adult a student well, we do have an employee, but they're only uh, they're only employed at a simple job level. And again, another student. While I'm also looking at the info views, I want to look at our city information panel, and it shows our demand meter. So we have pretty full bars across the board, and a lot of these statistics are very similar to what we had before the patch update. Uh, the only difference I'm seeing is with our office demand and it has decreased uh, slightly. And one of the main issues is uh, taxes and high skill labor availability. So if we take a look at our city statistics and go down to education, let's change the time scale to one year or five years yeah so five years gives us a good overview so we can see the patch came in around about the start of 2034 and since then we've just had um, quite a substantial decline in uh, highly educated citizens so 
There must have been a change in the mechanics that affects these people specifically because I'm not seeing any other changes with the other education levels and uh, that is negatively impacting our office demand. And I've also noticed some of our industrial buildings that are showing a lack of high skilled labour too. So as we can see here in our agricultural town of Evergreen, um, we have one of these industrial buildings um, showing a lack of high skilled labour. So if we look at the employee stats, uh, we have fulfilled all the positions up to educated. Our education funnel may have been negatively impacted by the patch update. So if we have a look at our education funnel, look at our college, this is where we can kind of see a significant shortfall. Uh, we have 3,800 eligible, but only around about 2,800 are attending. Um, so this is probably the issue that we have, uh, whereas our university is uh, looking quite healthy. Most that are eligible are going to university. So we probably need to have a look at where our colleges are situated and why people are not attending them. So we have three colleges in our city. Our first college bill is quite close to the central district. And uh, we can see we have a capacity of 1,500 students and we're currently at capacity in terms of attendance. Uh, the other college that we have is over the bridge here in the neighborhood of Lower Woodbridge. And this one is a similar situation. We have a capacity of a thousand with around about 965 attending. And our third college is in Newport, which is just over the mountain range here, uh, on top of this hill, I believe. Yes, here we go. Uh, so this one also has a capacity of a thousand, but only 341 students are attending. So I think what that tells me is the location of those colleges is quite important, or at least the ability to get to the colleges. So let's have a look at the connectivity of this college in this area. If we go to our transportation info view, uh, we can see that we do have a bus line that runs uh, right past the college itself and it goes into the center of town and connects up to the metro station which heads downtown itself. So it looks like we have pretty good connections. But one thing I've just noticed here, and that might be the cause for issues, is we we currently have a waypoint instead of a bus stop. And so this may ha be one of the issues causing a lack of attendance. We probably had a bus stop here originally, and at some point when we updated one of these roads or built this police station perhaps, uh, the, the bus stop got deleted. So let's put that back in and hopefully that should resolve the attendance issue that we have here I'm also going to reduce the pulling bay for the buses here this is what I like to do grab one of the alley roads let's use the straight road tool and I'm gonna keep snap to existing geometry and snap to zoning grid and I'm just going to find a nice middle point along here and then just simply double click. And what that should do is create a slightly shorter pull in for the bus. And then we can retain some of the parking here or if you're using the trees and grass verges, it's quite a nice addition. I'm not seeing that much use of the roadside parking. So while we're here, um, why not just spruce up this area with a little bit of greenery? There we go, fantastic. And additionally, I'm going to upgrade the college in the West Woodbridge area. The extension wing, it provides uh, a further capacity for 500 students. So let's add that on. 
and uh, we'll come back uh, later on in the episode to see how we're doing with our education funnel. To recap our last session, we constructed a bus rapid transport system that is a combination of segregated busway and bus lane networks. It starts at the central bus station, extending alongside the medical university, traveling northward, and concludes at the agricultural town of Evergreen. Currently, there are two lines running, an express route with limited stops that connects to an external city, and then a local route with multiple stops along the corridor. Today's focus will be on adding additional stops to the northern part of the route along an arterial road, and we can initiate the development of a transit-oriented community. So this is the arterial that we're going to be working on today. I'm going to create a diversion route for people to take because we probably want to remove much of this and replace it. So I'm going to grab the alley and uh, I'm simply just going to follow the tree line along the water here. Uh, so let's grab, let's create a couple of straight segments first and then we can connect these up with our curve tool. And then we can connect it up to this one here. So this is the area earmarked for development along the transit route. From above, uh, we don't have that many roads in the area. We have this short gravel road that kind of stubs out here. I put this down to represent the old country road that we had uh, once we replaced it with this highway road crossing onto the island. And then uh, on this side, we have the water side road that we just built and then also this spur that comes off around about the middle of this road here. We're going to use this point here as our access point to the new area and um, we can retain the connection heading down here as well and it kind of gives the area a little bit more of a historical presence using some of the existing infrastructure. So let's grab our two lane highway road. Let's use a few of these guidelines to help us put it in around about the right spot. It's going to be slightly different than before. Um, so it can just be a rough guide. Um, let's delete this middle segment here. That looks to be around about the place where we want to create our intersection. Let's add a guide road using one of these gravel roads. Make sure that's kept at 90 degrees. Let's grab the large roundabout. And then let's connect the highway road back up. There we go, that removes the roundabout. We're going to use a at grade traffic light intersection here. Let's convert these roads to three lane asymmetric highway roads as well. If we decide to change these later on, no problem. Let's grab the three lane highway and upgrade this one and this one. Go 60 meters out that way and 60 meters out that way. Let's create some new nodes. Let's create some slip roads to get a nice even corner. Now we can remove these. So if we take a closer look at the intersection, you can see that these lanes are now misaligned. So if you're heading straight on, uh, you have to turn along the road slightly. So let's use our upgrade tool and align those a little bit better. 
let's use the replace and then let's turn off the snapping. Now this isn't the desired result that I was expecting. I was hoping that the inside lane and the outside lane would continue into these two, but it looks like it's now connecting up to this one instead. So what I will think I'll do is remove the slip lane here. There we go, that took a little bit of finicky work, but we got it there in the end. I think it's fine not having a slowdown lane here. This is not going to be a super high traffic area. We're mostly going to have low and medium density developments in these areas. And um, this inside lane will not have that much traffic as well because it's going to be reserved mostly for the BRT system. So let's adjust some of the line markings and add our bus lanes. And with that, we've created these bus lanes, which end temporarily to allow turning traffic to join the lane and then turn off. And the same again here. And then we apply the bus lane again at the intersection so that buses can come to the front of the queue and keep on driving forward without any issue. We can actually add the bus lanes onto the outward roads as well. And then lastly, we just need to apply traffic lights to this area. Now we'll come back later to see how this is working, but I can't imagine there's going to be much traffic in this area until we start to build up more of the land around it. So we may need to make some adjustments in the future, but I'm quite happy with the result of this so far. Moving along, we're going to add a, another section to the road here. I've marked out where I want this centrally placed. I'm going to remove the old road. And I'm going to remove part of the new road as well to allow us some space to work. This will be one of our local BRT transfer points where people can hop on and off and jump back on. I'm going to set the elevation to 3.75. That's the highest you can go before it starts to create a retaining wall. Let's use some of our guidelines again. I now want to add some slip roads to connect this road up to these up here. Uh, I've not left myself with much space with the bus depot, so we may have to remove the bus depot and build it without this garage here, um, but we'll see what we can do with the space.
So there we have the bus lane slip road that take our local bus route off the main drag and into our transfer station. I did have to replace the bus depot. Uh, I managed to be able to squeeze in the extra garage onto the bottom side here. So the plan here is to give passengers a comfortable experience where they can wait for their bus away from the main road. A lot of BRT systems really employ a central bus road similar to what we did with the overpass and they will just throw down a station or a stop in the middle. But if you've ever been a passenger waiting in between two busy roads you can imagine how uncomfortable that feels. So the aim of this system here is to make the BRT system as comfortable and as attractive as possible, especially as we'll be building a more medium and low residential community that will probably be a bit more affluent. And we'd want to encourage ridership as much as possible and getting them to cross a busy road to wait on the medium is something I want to avoid. Fortunately, we have this intersection here uh, with these shakti road markings which represent give way yielding to the bus road, uh, which was not intentional but a happy accident if there was any. So that means any buses that are coming from the BRT system, they flow straight through without stopping as the vehicles here will have to give way to any traffic. So as you can see, we'll have road access to this area here and also bus access here. We'll also create a bus stop here with some pedestrian paths coming down. And then we're going to repeat the same again, what we did over here on the right side. And there we go. We've upgraded this arterial road to now have an at grade intersection here to serve the new development. We can also potentially look at developing this area here near the water. And we also have two of these transfer nodes which are purpose built for the BRT system. So we don't have any extra traffic using these areas. These will be our hubs in the community where we can add shops, parks, any other services, and then the area as we move out can primarily focus on residential. Originally this was going to be uh, mostly an, a business or office park, so we could possibly include uh, some areas. I think near the uh, bus depot there's quite a bit of pollution, um, there's especially noise coming from this, so we can probably use this area here more as a business pack. If we look at our unemployment level, it's currently at 3.2. Before the patch, I was at around about 7%, but I guess with the update, we lost a lot of highly educated citizens. And it may be the fact that I had a lack of workplaces why they moved away. So if we want to keep developing this city, we have to be careful and considerate about what we zone. I went a little bit too ham on the residential before. So yeah, certainly look at uh, creating a mixed use development in this area. Let's have a closer look at one of our BRT transfer stations. This will be the center of the community. So I wanted to avoid vehicle traffic as much as possible, prioritizing pedestrians and public transport. And uh, these roads are just here as a guide, but um, the plan is to convert this uh, to a pedestrian street and this is one that we can have run through the community almost like a pedestrian highway. The goal is that this street would probably be the quickest route for most people's needs if they needed to access any local services. Another nice thing about this design is we can also add a park into the central area 
while people wait for their bus so we can put a pack in this one maybe we'll look at using the plaza over here let's use the basketball court instead this is a community space so why not have community facilities here as well and we can also add in a few trees to help shade the area Now I'm not going to develop the neighborhoods today. We can have a session where we can plot out the area and be very careful and considerate where we allow vehicle traffic while also prioritizing people moving through this area. Now I'm just gonna finish off by adding some details and uh, I'll see you shortly. Okay, so I did make some changes. I wasn't a fan of having this large retaining wall facing what would be a um, community focused area, possibly a park or shopping area. I think um, using the terrain tools, we can raise up the land and kind of make this feel a little bit more seamless. Um, whereas when you're on the roadside, you don't really uh, worry too much about the views. Um, this is some concrete haven right here, but for pedestrians, fairly friendly. We have what is quite a gradual ramp coming up to um, one of our transfer stations for the BRT. We have this bridge that comes over and connects to the other side. And then over here where we've got our other transfer station, we have our pedestrian path, just like what we were talking about earlier. And this one mirrors something similar along with the packs. I also added the little power lines and we also have some guests, hello. Um, just to add some details to the area, uh, they're not absolutely necessary, I know I can bury them, but sometimes it's nice to be able to use them. I also added uh, a few bushes where I know what, that there won't be any development. Um, just kept everything fairly small. I've uh, pushed back these apple trees as close to this service road as possible just to avoid any leaves or apples falling onto the road below. There was a little strip of grass on this medium which I imagine would be an absolute nightmare to maintain so I've just added some uh, little bushes along this instead to keep it low maintenance. Whereas the, at the sides of the busway, we can probably bring in the maintenance team to keep that trim. Madison Crossing, who are we? City planner plays? I don't think so. At the moment, we're simply just going to say land or sale. And here we've got Prime Real Estate. And I'm sure if they uh, lined the council's pockets nicely, they may be able to move the firefighter helicopter depot somewhere um, less of a nuisance and have some lovely waterfront properties along here. So what would you develop in this area? Like I said, originally I was going to build industrial parks to tackle our high unemployment problem. But since the patch seems to have scared off all my potential employees, I'll probably focus more on building a walkable community 
one that can use the BRT system to complete trips into town, but also include shops and workplaces locally so that if they do need to commute, perhaps it's just a five minute walk away. Let's have a look to see the capacity of our college. So currently sitting at 369, I think that's slightly less than what we had before. So clearly replacing the bus stop didn't work. Uh, so the other one in Lower West Woodbridge, uh, we added an extra 500 places and it looks like they've uh, mostly filled up. We've got an extra 300 students. Um, looking at our overall education pipeline, we can see that our college is back into the green. Uh, one that we need to keep an eye out now for, it looks like the high school is edging into the orange. So we'll probably need to have a look at the access to high school. But overall, I think everything's looking good at the moment. The statistics are looking normal from what I remember from before the patch. Uh, you can clearly see that um, there's not that many well-educated people. They tend to uh, go to college and then almost immediately go to university which isn't necessarily a bad thing because people will fill in jobs of a lower education level. And one last thing I wanted to have a look at before we head out today is the land value and we had a quick look at it at the beginning of the last episode and it's uh, sitting at around about the same amount it was at 44,000, it looks to have completely settled at 43,000. And if we look at the overlay, it looks to have evened itself out a little bit more, merging areas where there's a higher amount of land value. As expected, our central area is extremely high value. And um, interestingly, we have this uh, low density neighborhood, which is originally low, now medium land value. Overall, it's looking fairly healthy. There's still some areas where I'm not sure where land value is coming from. We have this road here with nothing built on it and there seems to be a lot of land value around here. That's maybe uh, the proximity to the water. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but overall, I'm happy with the way things are at the moment. And yeah, the city is looking really healthy. Thank you very much for joining me today. And I'm absolutely blown away from the support you guys have given me. And I'm super excited to share more of the city with you. Hopefully it's going to stop raining for the next episode. Have a good one. See ya.